Um, but I just was saying it's a really international group here, and it's been really neat to see that because Nicaragua uh, as a country is an area that has been developing over the last 10, 15, 20 years, and we've started to see much more of an international interest in it. Uh, personally, I'm Rachel Jensen. I'm, I'm from New York originally. I spent a lot of time in Nicaragua. It was actually the first country that I lived in when I moved outside of the States. I was living in Managua, Nicaragua at the time. I was going all over the country with travels and really getting a good handle for it. But what I really realized, it was a place that I really enjoyed. It was a place that seemed to be a lot more adventurous than Costa Rica. A lot of times you hear people compare Nicaragua to Costa Rica as being the next Costa Rica. Personally, I think at this point, it's even better than that. It is more raw. It's more for the adventurous people. It's more so for the people who are looking for great value at this point, who can see past all of the, the craziness and, and media hype about the country. So I wanted to say thank you, everybody, for joining us for this session. I know that we had close to a thousand people register for the webinar. We are recording it. So you will be able to get a copy of the presentation afterwards. You can pass it along to your friends, your family, people who you think may be interested in hearing about it as well, or perhaps those people who think that you may be a little wild for looking at Nicaragua as a country, you'll be able to pass that along. This will be about an hour long. We'll have time at the end for question and answer ses session. So where you typed in, where it is you're calling in from that Q&A section, that is where you will be typing in your questions as they come up. With us today, I also wanted to introduce Natalie Schultz. Natalie is a property consultant with us at ECI Development, and she'll be joining us for her first webinar with us at ECI. Although she's been with us for some time, this is her first webinar debut. Natalie, why don't you give us a, a quick introduction about yourself and say hi to the group here. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm so happy to be here. Like Rachel said, it's my first webinar. I don't know why I've delayed it, but um, I'm really happy to, to see so many people still having so much interest in this great community. So I am originally from Oklahoma, from Oklahoma City. I moved down to San Pedro, Belize about five years ago. I've been living here permanently. And uh, yeah, I've been working with ECI for a little over a year now, and it's been great. Awesome. Thank you. We're going to just jump right into the presentation here. So before we get into the specifics about Ava, what we're going to do is help you identify where in the world Nicaragua is located. Although it is the biggest country within Central America, uh, oftentimes it is overlooked because places like Panama or Costa Rica or Belize tend to get a little bit more attention than Nicaragua. But as you can see, Costa Rica is down to the south and we have Honduras to the north. And what's really neat about Nicaragua is we do have both the, the the Caribbean and also the Pacific waters. So where we're going to be talking about though during this presentation is the Pacific side of, of Nicaragua, uh, Grand Pacifica, hence the name Pacific. Grand Pacifica is where we'll be talking about and Grand Pacifica is located a about 45 minutes from Managua. Managua, and if you can follow, I don't know if you can see my cursor over here, but you can see that black dot where it says Managua, that's the capital. If you're deciding to come and visit the country or you wanna to come down, down, live here, you have friends or family who are going to come down, you'll fly into Managua, that capital. And then it is a direct stretch to Grand Pacifica. It takes about 45 minutes. And what makes this location really unique is that we're the closest beachfront community, beachfront resort to Managua. So it is a very popular location for people to come for long weekends, for getaways. It's easy enough to own second homes there for people who live in Managua. So it really is a unique location. In addition to that, we have two of the best surf breaks right there in front of the Grand Pacifica property. So if we have any surfers on the line, then you haven't been down there yet. You may want to come down and check it out. For those of you who haven't surfed yet, this is a great place to learn. There is a beginner wave there. It's where I did my first and probably only surf lesson. It definitely is a difficult, difficult sport, but it is really neat to, uh, to give a shot at. And around Grand Pacifica, there are little villages and communities as well in different neighborhoods uh, within Grand Pacifica. So although you're only 45 minutes from Managua, the capital, which is where you have things like Sam's Club and you have malls and you have a lot of the chains, you are able to uh, go grocery shopping and do a lot of that little shopping around the Grand Pacifica neighborhood. Now, Nicaragua is a very popular location. We did a Nicaragua 101 presentation couple of weeks ago and we covered all of this information in greater depth. It was about an hour long. If you would like a copy of the recording of our Nicaragua 101 presentation, just reach out to us webinar at ecidevelopment.com. 
webinar at ecidevelopment.com and we'll send you that entire recording. But a couple of the reasons here I'm going to highlight why Nicaragua is a place that many expats and, and tourists are really looking at is because it is one of the safest countries in the Americas. Now, this may surprise you. I'll have a slide on it in a moment. This may surprise you because of all the, the hype in the media that you hear about, but it is regarded as one of the safest country in the Americas. In addition to that, because Nicaragua really hasn't had the popularity that places like Costa Rica, Pacific Costa Rica has, or Panama, you do tend to find real estate is more affordable in Nicaragua. So for those of you who are still looking for the, the beautiful Pacific waters, this, the stunning sunsets, but you don't necessarily want to play, pay the, the plateau prices like you have in Costa Rica, you want something a little bit more affordable, you want to be at the start of the curve, then Nicaragua is where you'll, you'll want to be considering. And for those of you who are looking at moving to Nicaragua or spending time, significant time in the country, a lot of times we find expats tend to come to this country because it is very affordable. Um, I'd say probably one third, you can live on uh, very, very well for about one third of what you're living on in North America. I know we have a very international bunch with us. Um, so it may depend a little bit also on your lifestyle. Some of you may be more into the designer stuff. Others may be uh, more into the local living, but you do tend to find overall, it is extremely affordable if you're looking at your day-to-day -day life. Now, in addition to that, Nicaragua is a tremendous country. There are many different micro microclimates within the country. There are volcanoes, the Pacific, the Caribbean. Uh, Somoto Canyon is one of my personal favorites out there. It's like that, we call it the, the Grand Canyon of Nicaragua, but you're able to canoe through it and, and jump off some rocks into the water. And it's just a really stunning uh, stunning part of the country. For those of you who like cigars or rum, uh, you'll find a lot of that there. Coffee as well. I think Nicaragua is the place where I actually started to enjoy the taste of coffee without the creamers and the sugars because it is just so fresh and, and, and such a great taste to it. But uh, in addition to that, there are a lot of other reasons why Nicaragua is so popular. I can tell you as an organization, ECI Development has been working in Nicaragua for about 20 years at this point, a little bit less than 20 years at this point. It is a country that we feel very comfortable with, very familiar with, and it's one that we're going to continue developing in uh, because we really do appreciate the people and, and just the ease of doing business in, in the country. And we do get that question quite a bit is, why did you choose Nicaragua? I mean, of course we see great value in it as well, but it really, it really offers an incredible lifestyle for people who want to live there and an incredible investment opportunity for those as well. Now, I we mentioned earlier that Nicaragua is considered the safest country in Central America. I know this tends to surprise people uh, just because we hear a lot of what's being said on the media and we tend to think that Nicaragua is this dangerous drug ridden place. And I can tell you when I moved down, I moved down in 2012. Uh, to Nicaragua, I gave my parents two weeks notice and I said, all right, well, I got an internship in, in, in Nicaragua, I'm moving to Managua. And the first thing that I thought was you're going to get kidnapped, it's the most dangerous place in the region. Uh, obviously, none of that happened, regardless of where you go in the world, you had to be careful. But uh, Nicaragua was a place that I felt very comfortable living in. I was in Managua, the capital at that point. Uh, that's where our ECI admin offices are going back and forth to Grand Pacifica, rented cars on the weekends, traveled by myself. You know, the one thing that I was told was you may not want to travel at night and not necessarily because it's dangerous, but because there may be potholes or something in the road. But uh, I do always encourage you to do your own homework, do your own due diligence, come down and check out the country for yourself. That's why we do these discovery tours to give you the opportunity to do so because it gives you a real sense of the reality, not necessarily what's being said on the media or from your friends. I mean, friends and family tend to be the ones who get the most scared, but invite them down. And eventually it took my mom about a year and a half to come down to Nicaragua on, her vaca on a vacation. And she said it was one of the best vacations she's had in her entire life. So I do recommend it for everybody to come down and at least check out to see what it is um, what it is that it's like there. But going to real estate for, or here's another um, chart about the Nicaraguan safety. And where you, when you look at this, um, the homicides per 100,000 inhabitants from the World Atlas 2020, I mean, it's just so amazing to see. Nicaragua is this little green, this little green box over here. So you compare that to a Cleveland or Ohio or a St. Louis, Missouri. When people tell you that Nicaragua is more dangerous than North America, show them this slide. And it right there can prove them wrong. Costa Rica, Panama, two other countries in Latin America that people have been buying property up the wazoo and vacationing to for, for decades, really. And so you can see because there is this real 
false belief in the fact that the country is not safe. As a result, real estate prices are much lower in this part of, of, of the region than it is in other places like Costa Rica and Panama. So again, happy to show this to you, but here on the right-hand side from the World Economic Forum, crime and theft as a major problem for doing business. You see Nicaragua is there at the bottom, El Salvador, Guatemala, these other countries, Panama is even on there. Uh, United States parked right there in between. I mean, it really is incredible. When you start to look at the stats and look at the facts, you tend to learn a lot more about the country and see it truly for what it is. So some of you who've been on our webinars before may have seen this real estate investment curve. And depending what you're looking to accomplish when you're buying investment real estate, you may tend to find that one country works better for you than the other. So if you're looking for a country where the property is already cash flowing, it's producing really well, it probably means it's high in the tourism market, it's been around places like Pacific Costa Rica. And Pacific Costa Rica, the popular place there is Guanacaste. Guanacaste is on the northern part of the country on the Pacific side. It's actually not too far from where Grand Pacifica is located. Um, it's just south, there's Grand Pacifica, and then you go down south, and then you get to that Guanacaste area. But Guanacaste and Pacific Costa Rica, Costa Rica's done a great job at, at advertising and marketing itself as a prime tourism destination. And as a result, over the last 25, 30 years, it's become a popular place for people to buy real estate. So it also tends to be more expensive. While you have tourists going down there, it tends to be more expensive because of the popularity in the market. When you get down to the bottom part of the curve, you see countries that are more popular uh, for investors who are looking for appreciation. So these are people who can probably hold on to real estate for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. They're going to start to see continuous um, increase in cash flow as the country becomes more popular, but they're able to hold on to it and have more opportunity for appreciation. Countries at the top part of the curve, you're just not seeing much appreciation at this point because there's really been a plateau in the market there. Now, with each of these countries, you can see that you can thin slice them even more. So you have Pacific Costa Rica, you have the Costa Rica Highlands, you have Caribbean Costa Rica. Those are three areas that are broken down within the country. In Nicaragua, you can do the same. I mean, it's even fair enough to say that you can thin slice it into the specific resorts and areas that uh, the country has. And Grand Pacifica, while Nicaragua as a country as a whole is located at the bottom part of the curve, I would say that Grand Pacifica Resort, where the Ava community is located, is really more at that middle part of the curve. Where you see it says Belize, I would say it's fair to add Grand Pacifica specifically to that area there. And the reason for that is because Grand Pacifica has been in the tourism market for the last 15, 16 years. So we've had condos there. There have been homes and, and places for people to own. So because we've already established ourselves in the marketplace, we're not necessarily coming in as a new contender. So properties are continuing to appreciate, but we already have guests and visitors who are coming to the property because of our longevity in the marketplace. And as I mentioned before, we have two of the best surf breaks right there in front of the Grand Pacifica property. So we've been getting surfers for a while. Uh, in addition to that, those weekend travelers who are coming from Managua uh, and also those people who don't want to travel too far when they're landing in the country, being only 45 minutes from the capital, it's easy enough to get to the property and on fully paved roads. Uh, for those of you who have been to Grand Pacifica before, you know that it was a bit of a long stretch of, uh, of 11 kilometers of not being paved, but as of last year, it is fully paved, meaning it is a very smooth ride to get out there to your home or to your vacation. Uh, in addition to that, it's, ex it's extremely affordable when it comes to the cost of living. Uh, I can give you some real numbers. When I was living there, I was in Managua, that's the capital, not necessarily beachfront. I had a, a one bedroom place, probably about 800 square feet, paying about $350 a month. I paid the utilities, but I had housekeeping that came three times a week and made sure that the, the towels and the linens were cleaned and made sure that the, the, um, the floor was cleaned. And so what that really was able to do was enhance my quality of life. Well, yes, I had this great apartment in a great part of town, but I still had a housekeeper coming and you're able to do something similar. Um, healthcare, for example, in, in Nicaragua, in Nicaragua, there's JCI accredited hospital, which means it meets international standards. You're able to get medical procedures done for a fraction of the cost that it would cost uh, in many other parts of, around the world. But just generally, it's a very affordable cost of living. And like I alluded to earlier, it really just depends on your lifestyle. I know some people who are looking to get the, the latest you know, and greatest everything, but then other people who are looking to just take a step back and really, you know, really just save and, and do things, but they can do so affordably. So extremely affordable cost of living. 
in Nicaragua, and then also an amazing year-round climate. So for those of you who are looking maybe to get out of the cooler climates, uh, Nicaragua does have a very tropical temperature, about 80 to 85, up to 90 sometimes degrees uh, during, the, during the year. And then we do have a rainy season and a dry season. Um, and you know, like in Florida, for example, rainy season, uh, during the rainy season, it could rain for an hour, you know, pretty hard during that one hour, but then it's sunshine and green there without. So Nicaragua is certainly a tropical, tropical location. And so what we're seeing now in the country is that tourism is, is really starting to grow again. While there's North Americans who are coming down right now, a lot of the, the travelers and visitors are actually from within Central America. So it is fairly easy to get from the different locations. I know um, for some of you on the line, you're also looking at Panama. And in, in Panama, you can go direct between Managua and Panama. And there are a lot of other direct flights too within the region. But you know, one thing to note too is that Nicaragua never closed their borders over this last year. I know there was a lot of hoopla and back and forth and countries not really sure what they wanted to do. Nicaragua as a country never closed their borders. Um, airlines may have stopped flying to the country. I know that we still had homeowners who were able to charter planes and still get into the country. But I do want to note that, that even though there was a lull in tourism in, in 2020, just around the globe, I mean, I think we all understand that the country did stay open. And so it was in a great position to keep welcoming visitors as, uh, as people wanted to come down in and travel. So we are seeing that tourism is continuing to resume again in the country. And here is the webinar I was mentioning earlier, webinar at grandpacifica.com or webinar at ecidevelopment.com. Just uh, request your free copy of the Nicaragua 101 webinar. I probably even went a little long there, but we do that section uh, in about an hour just to really go into the, the good, the bad, the ugly about the country. And it's always good for you to know that as you are looking to make an investment into the property. So with that, I'm going to welcome Miss Natalie here on uh, the webinar. And Natalie is going to jump into a little bit more about the Eco Village Asachio community. Ava is located within Grand Pacifica. So as a whole, Grand Pacifica is about 2,500 acres. We've been developing there since the early 2000s. And we have different neighborhoods within the property. We have condo communities that have already been accommodating overnight guests and, and weddings and the retreat groups that are coming. In addition to that, we have a Casita Village. So we have homes that are about 1,000 square feet. We have single family home lots for people to build custom homes in an area called San Diego Viejo. In Santa Barbara, we have larger estate properties for people who are looking to build 5,000 square foot plus homes. But Ava you know, really came about uh, last, I'd say we've been talking about the, the concept of tiny homes over the last couple of years, but it was really the beginning of last year when we decided to, to nail down on building this community for like-minded individuals, you know, those freedom lovers out there, people who wanted a place that they could go to either as a plan B or have it as an investment property in a safe community, in a beautiful community within Grand Pacifica. And so what we did is we have these, uh, these two phases of Ava homes. There are four models which we're gonna go to in greater detail, but the homes are really geared towards people who are looking to reduce their carbon footprint, want to live more eco-consciously. Uh, do note that these homes are off-grid and Natalie will mention that, but these homes are off-grid. They're not connected to electricity. So they're not connected to uh, the power line. So if you're somebody who needs uh, you know, the washer dryer, if you're somebody who needs to have the dishwasher, this probably isn't the community for you. This is really geared towards people who want to live eco-consciously or cater towards that group. So we do have other neighborhoods, of course, that we'll, uh, we're happy to talk to you about, but I, I'm really excited for this one. It's a really awesome property. It's just stunning. As you can see here in the rendering, there's the river that, um, that, that goes around the property. And then uh, right in the front, there's also the Pacific Beach. So there's a lot of really neat opportunity here for home ownership for the investors. And then also for the people who want to uh, want to live here, at least spend time in the beautiful beach community. So, oh, look at that. I kind of uh, jumped ahead over here, but here's the master plan of Ava or of Grand Pacifica as a whole. And you can see specifically where Ava is located within the property. Now note that it is 2,500 acres. It's a, it's a large property uh, where you see the blue boxes over here. That's the San Diego Viejo area I mentioned before, the single family home lots. The condo community uh, is located just to the right of that. Uh, the purple that you see over here, that's Sandy, Santa Barbara, the larger estate lots. And then directly um, next to that is Ava, which are the eco-friendly tiny homes 
And uh, then you can see the river going around and then also the, the Pacific Ocean right in front. So a truly beautiful part of the property. And one other thing I do want to mention is the beach here. So I mentioned to you three and a half miles of direct beach frontage. And there's a restaurant and pool already on site where you're able to go from the Ava community, especially during low tide, walk the beach here. It's about a mile, about a mile and a half, and then be right over there uh, at the condo community and enjoy a nice dinner at Sea Salt or enjoy the pool uh, or do it as the sun setting. I don't know what time the tide goes. So just make sure you, you notice that before, but um, it is a really, really stunning and beautiful location. All right, so a little bit more about Ava. Um, we mentioned a little bit before, but Ava is located within Grand Pacifica and it's a beautiful Riverside community. It's actually under construction right now. Uh, for those of you who, who haven't been following us for a while, it is under construction right now. And it will include common areas, the pool and a fire lounge and areas for people to come together and really enjoy the third spaces. We mentioned the surf beaches also the off-grid uh, tiny homes, of course, which is what we're gonna talk about here. And then one of the features includes the gray water recycling that has your gardens, so, or can water your garden. So we will uh, just, just jump right in. And then um, all right, what to expect. So when you're at Ava, you'll see there are a handful of different things already there on site surfing, as we mentioned before, fishing for those of you who enjoy Pacific surfing. In addition to that, there is the community. And what's really neat about the, the community aspect is because we already have Grand Pacifica there and it's operating. So you do have neighbors already there in place. And specifically within the Ava community, it is really neat to see how it has become a group of like-minded owners, people who are who do care about the, the environment and are eco-conscious and want to be around other people who are, are feeling the same. In addition to that, sustainable living. So this is actually really exciting. There will be community gardens there on site. If you're a gardener and you want to have your own garden on the side of your home, you're able to do so as well. But I think this is really exciting. And because there is this volcanic soil there at Grand Pacifica, it is really a great environment for you to garden, to be growing it. What grows well are the tropical fruits. So you have the papaya, the bananas, the plantains, um, all of those other fruits that you may be thinking about. Mangoes, for example, mango season is, is just starting. So it's really neat to, to see that there right on site. And then of course, last but not least is that, that freedom. So in addition to being you know, untethered from your, your home country and having that plan B, you'll be able to live without those large utility bills that maybe you're experiencing right now and really just enjoy the surrounding area and the people that are around you. So we mentioned before that the Ava homes have a lot of those sustainable features. So the green roof, uh, which I think is really important for people who are looking at efficiency and insulation, you know, keeping the cooler temperatures in. In addition to that, the gray water recycling. So you're able to reuse the water from your sink and your shower and use it to water your garden and then also off-grid living. So you will have the solar panels there um, and we've made it as, you know, really as efficient as possible as you're living there. And then here are some pictures from right outside the neighborhood. So you have the, the Asachio Beach and that's really where the name comes from, Eco Village Asachio. Asachio is the beach right in front of the Ava community. So you have the, the beautiful beaches there. You're surrounded by the rivers as well and you're able to kayak and paddleboard. And there's just a lot of natural outside um, activities for you or perhaps you're looking at this from an investment perspective for your renters to take advantage of. And then of course there's Asachio. And uh, this is the, the, the beach where you'll tend to find surfers who are just beginning to learn how to surf. It has some calmer waves compared to the meat grinders, which is just a little bit up north. But if you are a surfer or maybe you're just beginning to learn how to surf or maybe you've never surfed before and wanna try, this is a great wave to do so right out there on the beach. Uh, but perhaps you're more just a boogie boarder or somebody who enjoys hanging in the ocean instead of surfing, you're certainly able to do so as well. So there are four home models available. And Natalie, why don't you jump in here and give us a little bit more about each of the models and we can show folks their options. Yeah, thanks, Rachel. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so as you said, um, there's, there's four home models and our team really did an amazing job of um, utilizing every inch of space in these homes and then really emphasizing the outdoor space. So we'll move here in a couple of slides, you'll be able to see, to see the floor plan and the whole layout. And you'll notice 
um, how much outside space there is. And just to kind of piggyback off what she was saying about moving down here, you know, when you move south of the border and you decide to take that leap and, and go as we did, you're really trading material things for a better lifestyle. And you're coming down here and you don't need that large home to put all of your things anymore. So, um, you know, we spend most of our time outside the home. Um, and so that's why these green living spaces are so important in each, each home, no matter which one you choose, it has a great outdoor living space, lots of room. So um, let's jump right in here. We've got the Laura model that is 99.9. That one is a single floor, so if you want, um, you know, everything to be on one floor of the home, that would be a good option. One bedroom on that one, and then it has the rooftop terrace, the Halcone model. That's going to give you a really nice, slick, modern design with a true loft. Um, that one's my favorite. I can't wait to see this one go up. Um, yeah, that one comes in at 333 square feet and 1019, and that does have a true loft with the bedroom upstairs. Then we've got the Perico. That's gonna be the most compact model. That is a semi-loft. So it's sort of like a studio with a semi-loft with the bed up a little set of stairs, and you'll have a desk below, a kitchen, and then again, you have that nice rooftop terrace that covers the entire patio. That one is 94.9. And then probably our most popular model, the Macaw, that's going to be your biggest option, good for families, or if you want to split up your living space and you need a workspace, you could convert that second bedroom into an office, um, and you've got a great wraparound patio on the top and the bottom of this home, and that one's two bed, two bath, and 132.9. Yeah, so here you can see a little bit more on the Laura. That's the that's the single story. So if you had a disability or you just weren't into the loft model, this might be a good option for you. Um, you see it's got the entire rooftop terrace, so great for entertaining. Um, it's also got the serving window. You'll notice that serving window on the front of the home. We talked about, you know, spending so much time out home. Yeah, the homes are, are they are tiny, they are tiny, but you do have so much outside space. So we've got that serving window there as a really nice feature to make it really convenient to entertain outside. Um, also, I want to point out too, you'll notice there's a washing machine in each of the homes. You've got the storage unit over there with the battery space and then additional storage. Um, this is the Halcone model, 333 square feet. This is the true loft. So um, as you can see, the bedroom is upstairs and then you would have that two-story, really tall, tiny home, but really have a nice open space to live in um, when you're not outside on the, the huge wraparound balcony. And then the Perico, this one again is the smallest one. And you can see a little bit better what I was speaking about with the semi loft with the little loft up on top of the desk area and the closet, a ton of storage in this one. You've got a big storage unit in the back with the batteries and the closet desk under the bed. There would be enough room over there to put another bed, another child or another person could sleep up there. So that gives you a little bit more room too. And then the macaw, the two bedroom. This one has so much outside space. I really wanna highlight the downstairs patio and then the upsta upstairs terrace. Um, tons of outdoor living space in this one. And of course the second bedroom and bathroom upstairs. And then um, these have a really modern, more updated sleep design. You can see we've added a lot of the greenery in the bathrooms, try to bring that outside space inside and really combine the two to just give it a really warm, modern touch. And then like Rachel talked about, there's gonna be common areas over by the river. There's gonna be yoga spaces, yoga platforms, a workspace center, swimming pool. I think we might have a little restaurant over there, bar area. Um, yeah, really beautiful lots of space to roam around in this community. Yeah, and I, I wanna even emphasize, you know, Natalie, you just said it, but the pool area, the third space is, you know, something else that we're seeing a lot is this concept of digital nomads and people coming down to different locations, they're able to flip open their computer, connect up to internet. And yes, there will be internet uh, in, in this community, but they'll be able to connect up to internet and get their work done. And maybe they'll spend two, three, four, five months here, but having that 
that sort of third space truly is important or common area um, as it's it's commonly referred to as well. But we talked about the fire pits, the uh, the the outdoor area, the, the gardens, the community orchards, and you'll see the pool here, an area for people to come together and really just enjoy the space. And so I think this is one of the big factors that a lot of folks like when they're looking at the property. And I'm gonna just go back as well to um, a couple of the models here that I want to put even a little bit more emphasis on. I've seen that some of the more pop, this is, this is I think, has been one of the most popular options is the, Mac the Macaw floor plan. And people who are looking at it are looking at it twofold. Some are looking at it from the lifestyle perspective and exactly like Natalie said, there is a second room, which either could be a, a bedroom if you want it to be, it could be an office if you're somebody who's a digital nomad and works from your computer, or if you're looking at it from the rental perspective, it's great for the people who are coming maybe with another couple or an adult child or a child generally, and they all want to be within the same, the same space. I'd say this is probably one of the most popular options. I mean, they're all really quite unique in their own way. They offer something a little bit different. And you may see that one model speaks to you more uh, than the other. Halcone has also been popular because it has the up to upstairs loft space. But like Natalie mentioned, and I also want to highlight again, and this is good for you to write down, is the fact there is this owner usage storage or owner storage location where you're able to store some of your own stuff. So if you're planning to put your home in the rental market, and let's say you want your own linens or your own, your own towels, you can store it there in your storage, lock it off for the guests, and, uh, and then have it there for when you come back. And then also the washer. So it's not a washer dryer, it's just a washer. Uh, in this part of the world, it's not uncommon to hang dry your, your clothes because it is so warm outside. But also do remember these are eco-efficient homes. So like if, if you're, like I said earlier, if you're someone who needs that washer, that dryer, or you need that, uh, that dishwasher, then let's look at other options for you because here we really, uh, want to be really sa saving our energy because we are totally uh, off grid when it comes to the electricity. So do bear that in mind as you are considering which home works for you. And then you're able to take any of these four models and put them on any uh, location within the property. So really just depends on, on what you're looking for and which home model speaks the most to you. So what I want to show you here is an example of a Performa. So like I mentioned earlier, we as Grand Pacifica have been around in the rental industry for the last 15-ish years. Uh, Grand Pacifica has a condo community called, called Las Perlas. In addition to Las Perlas, we have single family homes that get rented and casitas. So we have a good handle on the rental market and what it is that people are, are looking for, what the average daily rate would look like. And then in addition to that, the occupancy, of course. So the example here is for the Paracle model and you'll see uh, that we have two different scenarios. We have the industry standard case and then we have the conservative case. So if we take a look, let's take a look at the right one first, the conservative case. So if occupancy is at 46% and the average daily rate is about $110, and that's great. There's a single family home, it has a kitchen, that's a really incredible rate. Then you're looking net after all of your expenses are paid. If you look at the bottom part of the screen there, you're run one looking at about 7% net return on investment, which is really, you know, still quite good. Now, if we take it up a notch, we're at 53% occupancy, which is about average occupancy for Grand Pacifica, then we see after all the expenses, average daily rate highlighted there at 129, then the, the net projections are about 10.4% net return on investment, which obviously is quite good looking after all of your expenses are paid. So that is that is uh, good to see and good to understand what your rental potential is within the community. We do have an in-house turnkey rental management company who takes care of everything for you. So you don't have to worry about it when you're not there. Um, I would highly suggest if you are looking to put it in the rental program to certainly use the in-house company. Uh, they have the experience, they're there on site, able to take great care of your guests and make sure they're getting the best experience uh, as possible but you do see that there is the potential there to do really quite well. And just to give you a little bit more feedback about who's already staying at Grand Pacifica. So we talked about the long weekend travelers who are coming from Managua. Being the closest beachfront community to the capital, that's where a majority of the population lives in Managua, you see that there's easy access, close access to come out to Grand Pacifica. I know over Easter, over the major holidays, um, and then also the local holidays, we tend to be at 100% capacity when it comes to our 100% occupancy when it comes to rentals and we just simply don't have enough to cater towards everybody 
because we just don't have the inventory. So that was one of the big driving factors for this community. In addition to that, we get a lot of wellness groups that are coming down. So place people who you know are over Costa Rica, maybe they've been there before, been there, done that, prices are getting outrageous. They still want someplace beautiful. They want someplace tropical, easy to get to. So they'll come to Grand Pacific. And we know because we've seen this before, the yoga groups come down, the wellness retreat groups are coming down. So being able to cater towards that group is important too, because there have just been times where we haven't had enough inventory to uh, to give to the, the the wellness groups. Weddings are also very popular at Grand Pacific. If you type weddings Grand Pacifica into Google, you'll see some stunning pictures. But because it is right there at the beach, the sunset, it just really makes for a very picturesque location to get married and have those celebrations in life. And then in addition to that, we have the digital nomads that we alluded to a little bit earlier, because the world is becoming a lot more digital and we're becoming so untethered to an office per se, you're able to, a lot of people are able to do their job wherever in the world they are. They're able to open their laptop, connect up to Wi-Fi, answer emails, get on those conference calls and get their job done. And that I don't think is going to be changing ever. We've seen with the past year as businesses have become more remote, as people have been able to see that they can get their job done and they don't have to be going to the same office every day from eight to five or nine to five. They can be sitting on the tropical beaches of Nicaragua while doing it catering to that group as well uh, is something that we are already doing and people are realizing that they're able to do too. So um, you don't have to rent your home out. It could be a place for you to live. It could be a place for you to come back and forth to, but that's totally up to you. And depending on what your ultimate goals are, you may find that one, one solution works better for you than the other. But uh, if you are interested in the other models here, we just have the example of the Perico, but if you're interested in the Laura or the Halcone or the Macaw, let us know. Our team can run the numbers for you here specifically, and then we can send those over your way. In addition to that, we do have financing available. Uh, we work with a bank based in Belize, Key Bank. You see the name there on the screen, C-A-Y-E. And if you are interested in financing with Key Bank, there are two options. You can put are you 50% financing or 80% financing? And uh, we can certainly have our team talk to you about what those rates look like and what those numbers. And then of course, these numbers adjust depending on the model that you're looking at and depending on the financing that you choose. So there's a lot of text right over here, but in the end, just understanding what your ultimate goal is with Ava. Are you looking at this from an investment property, a plan B, a place to relocate to? I know uh, over the, the past year, we, we've seen a lot of people who just, they've gotten fed up with whatever is going on or whatever's going on in their life or or in their country and they packed their bags and moved to Nicaragua as uh, some of them are there right now at Grand Pacific watching their tiny home get built which is really quite neat to see but there's a really a really good group of of people there in Ava because it's within Grand Pacifica you have the amenities that are already there on site now, the other point I want to mention to you, I know a lot of you are thinking about your plan B, you're looking at protecting your most important asset, which is yourself. And the most and easy, the best way that you can protect yourself is through residency in another country. So if you're looking at this opportunity with the intention of perhaps moving to Nicaragua, having a residency, which is essentially a green card, gives you permission to live there, is really an important thing to have. And in Nicaragua, there's an investor residency residency there, you invest $30,000 or more into the country or into Grand Pacifica. And then from there, you're able to apply for your residency. So ownership of a home at AVA will qualify you for your investor residency. Residency costs $2,800. That includes a Nicaraguan corporation and application for the primary applicant. You are able to add dependents for an additional $1,300. Um, it can be your spouse if you're legally married or your children up to 18. After 18, then they're considered a primary applicant. So maybe they, uh, they, can, get, uh, they can get their own home or they can be a business partner with you. But just note here that in order to qualify for the residency, your AVA home has to be held in the name of a Nicaragua corporation. So that's why you see that $1,500 there for the corporation. The attorney will work with you, get the Nicaragua corporation set up. And then when the home is complete, we'll title it in the name of your Nicaragua corporation. You can start with the residency documents beforehand, but do note that you will need to have that Nicaragua corporation. But again, the attorney helps you with all of that, goes through all the paperwork with you. So it's certainly something uh, that you do not have to do on your own. We have the right folks in place to assist you. But through that, you're able to get your permanent residency. Do note that it is, it's a five-year term for the residency. 
Um, and you do get, you get residency cards and then every six months you just have to renew that residency card, but your status as a resident is good for uh, five years. And then from there, you're able to renew it directly with the attorney. And if you'd like more information about that, contact us. Uh, there you see webinar at grandpacifica.com and just put NICA residency, N-I-C-A residency into the subject line there. Our team can send you the requirements for the residency. Uh, I know a few of you, I see a couple of familiar names on the line here too, who have also been looking at TEAK ownership, T-E-A-K ownership with us. And as long as you're investing $30,000 or more into the TEAK farms, you're able to apply for your permanent residency there in the country. But this is really ideal for people who are planning to live in the country, I'd say as a, a plan B um, Nicaragua may not be the best country for that. I think Panama is it's one of the easiest to maintain and it's a permanent one, but this is definitely a necessity, I would say, if you're planning to live in the country and get your green card. All right, so we have a little video here for you and then Hi, hopefully, yeah, perfect. There we go. We're going to do a quick drive through Grand Pacific and visiting Ava, the tiny homes. So here we have Osachio Beach. Tiny home Hopefully you can hear it. Eva, which stands for Eco Village Asuchillo. I'm standing on the new riverside hiking paths, which create a short nature lovers walkway from your home to the beach. to where the river meets the ocean. Here we are looking at where the river ends and pours into the Pacific Ocean. With the calm waters of the river and all the wildlife that it attracts, stand-up paddle boarding and kayaking is amazing in this area. When you're done with your kayak trip, you can go boogie boarding, surfing, or just swimming in the warm ocean water. The beach here is perfect for families because of the gently sloping beach and shallow water. Where I am standing now is where the ocean and riverfront bar and restaurant will be with some of the most spectacular sunsets over the water that you will ever see in your lifetime. Over there by the grass huts will be a yoga palapa and a little further down the beach will be the artisan market with fruits, vegetables, arts and crafts. If you want to just push pause and discover a new dreamy lifestyle, just come to Grand Pacifica and see it for yourself. We will be waiting for you. Love it. The beach is so beautiful there. That was awesome. That was from Andrea. She is one of our property consultants and lives at Grand Pacifica. So she's there on site as the, the construction is happening, as progress is happening, and able to send us awesome videos. Hi, like every that. Ooh, Hi everybody. Hi, everybody. thinking. Okay, perfect. All right. So just as a quick overview as to how you can own the home, I know that getting maybe you need to get a little creative with the, the, the funding part of it. But if you are somebody who does have the ability to um, pay in cash, we do have construction progress payments. So you don't need to pay for 100% of full. What we do is there are different percentages due at the times that the construction is moving forward. So first, if you see a home lot that you like to claim, $999 is what you'll put down. It's a refundable deposit. You have seven business days after receiving the final paperwork to decide if you want to move forward or not. If not, then we'll send you the deposit back. The next payment is a 50% payment less that deposit. And so you have uh, the seven days to go through that paperwork that we mentioned earlier. And then once you decide to move forward, then you'll have a 50% payment less the deposit. The next payment is 20% and that is due when the foundation is complete. This is typically a month or two into construction. 10% is due when the walls are up. And this is typically about four to five months into construction. 10% when the roof is on about six months into construction. And then the final 10% plus the closing when the home is complete. And that's typically about eight months, eight to nine months after the construction is complete. So do note that we do not start the homes until uh, we have an owner and the owner decides that they want to 
to move forward. And the reason for that is because we understand that everybody is drawn to a different model. And so we don't want to be putting models up in the specific lots. We want you as the owner to decide what model makes sense in that specific lot that speaks to you. So in addition to that, we accept cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin has probably been one of the most popular, but we do accept Ethereum, Litecoin, uh, many more. While we do accept cryptocurrency, you also have the ability to loan against your cryptocurrency. We work with a third party for that. Um, terms are typically from one to five years. I believe you can only loan though up to 40%. So 40% loan to value. So just bear that in mind as you're uh, running the numbers over there. And then we mentioned this a couple of slides ago, but financing. So we work with that, that bank, Key Bank, C-A-Y-E. They're based in Belize and they're the two financing options there. You can do 50% financing or 80% financing. And if you take a look on the right-hand side, you'll see if you're financing 50% down, it's 4.9% interest, five-year balloon with a 30-year AM schedule. If you're financing 80%, you're only putting 20% down, then there's a 6.9% interest, five-year balloon and a 30-year AM schedule. Now. One other method that has actually been pretty popular has been using gold bullion or precious metals, silver. Uh, we do accept that as well, but do, do bear that in mind if you have some in, in storage or hiding that you want to uh, offload and, and use towards the purchase of a home. And then last but not least, if you're from the States and you have a self-directed IRA, you are able to use your self-directed IRA to use uh, to own these homes as an investment property. You cannot live in it. You probably know it cannot be self-dealing. You also cannot apply for residency if you're using your self-directed IRA. But five ways to own. There's the cash, cryptocurrency, financing, gold bullion, or if you're from the States, you can use your self-directed IRA. All right, guys, just a couple more slides here, but I wanted to introduce you to some of our, our team members. This, these are our property consultants and folks that you, if you've reached out to us previously, you probably have heard from one of these uh, folks at some point, but what I really appreciate uh, and all the hard work that they're doing, of course, is the fact that these team members have gone through the process of doing something international before. So they've either moved abroad or applied for residency in another country or have a citizenship from another country, own investment real estate, I mean, regard, whatever it is, there are many different ways that people are getting involved internationally. So, you know, they're not just sitting from behind their computer in their hometown at Googling answers for you. They are people who, who've really gone through the experience before. So we're very happy to talk to you about your options and really see what makes the most sense for you. Maybe you're listening to this and you're like, nah, tiny home's not necessarily for me. Let us know. We may have other options for you at Grand Pacifica, or maybe you're ready to, to hop on a plane and move down there next month with your family. You know, we can certainly talk to you about what that process looks like. So last, last but not least here, I want to uh, suggest that you request a copy of the Nicaragua handbook. This is a great resource for you. It is complimentary. Email us their webinar at grandpacifica.com, but it complements the webinar, the, the Nicaragua webinar 101 that we talked about a little earlier, complements that really quite nicely. It goes into greater depth behind you know, the government, for example, and the, the different locations that you must visit when you're there in Nicaragua and the currency. So all of those questions that may be on your mind where you may not necessarily wanna to have to sit there and Google these one-on-one -on -one, you know, or one by one, you'll have it there in the handbook. All right, and then also we of course invite you down to join us for the Nicaragua Discovery Tour. It's coming up very quickly here. Today is April 20th. It's going to be May 13th to the 17th, so just a few weeks. We really like these events because it helps people to get familiar with the country. We do quite a few excursions around. Uh, we go to Granada, we, we check out Managua, of course, it's important for you to see what's in the capital. We go to Grand Pacifica, you get to try local cuisine and, and meet some of the locals living there at Grand Pacifica, but just a really great way for you to experience the country, the 13th, the 17th. If you're not able to join us in person, we do have a virtual component. Virtual is $99, the in-person is $999, and that covers accommodations and meals and activities and transportation and all of that fun logistical stuff, but reach out to us and we can certainly get you those details if you would like, uh, if you'd like to see it. And if uh, these dates don't work for you, I know that they are coming up, just reach out to us. Our team will give you the upcoming dates for the rest of 2021 in addition. So with that, I see we have about 10 minutes here. What we're going to do is jump into the questions and answers. I see we had Oh gosh, a good number of questions that came through during the presentation here. We may have answered some of them 
during the webinar, but what we're going to do at least is go through them anyway, since there's been a lot of information. And I know some of you were joining joined us a couple of minutes uh, after here. All right, so the first one here is I'm seeing, do you have any photos of a completed unit? So these homes are currently under, con excuse me, are currently under construction. Uh, we started construction about a month and a half ago on them. So we don't have anything that is completed at this point within AVA, but we do have homes uh, that are already completed at Grand Pacific. We also have condos that are completed. So if you're looking uh, perhaps just to see what construction has looked like and what the homes look like at Grand Pacific generally, we can certainly send that over to you. Another neighborhood that we've built within Grand Pacifica is called Milagro Verde. And Milagro Verde is an off-grid neighborhood as well. This is really our, our foray into the off-grid uh, space probably about 10, 12 years ago. And within Milagro Verde, we have larger homes. I think you know the largest is 5,500 square feet about, but these are larger, these are larger homes. So if you want to see those in Milagro Verde. Uh, we can send those to you, but it doesn't say your name here, it just as anonymous attendee. So just reach out to us to the email address that you see there, webinar at grandpacifica.com, and we can get those to you. In addition to that, Natalie showed some pictures of the renderings. Uh, we really are building to what the renderings look like. So that'll give you a good example uh, as well of what we expect them to look like finished. Andrew is asking if this is going to be recorded. Yes, Andrew, there will be a recording to this. We'll send it out about an hour, hour and a half after the webinar. If you don't see it in your inbox, please, please, please check your spam or check your, your junk or your promotions. Sometimes we end up in there and we just want to ensure that we have uh, communications coming through to you. Paige is asking about the public transportation options to Managua. So really great question there, Paige. So you are able, if you're, there's an 11 kilometer stretch off the primary road that goes out to Grand Pacifica. So if you're looking to um, get to that primary road, you're able, you can probably catch a ride with somebody and you're able to get the bus from that primary road into Managua. Uh, in addition to what I would recommend is just befriending some of the, the local neighbors there within Grand Pacifica. They do tend to go to Managua frequently. You're able to hop a ride with them. Uh, we also, when it gets to be high season and we do tend to have more folks living on site, we have a shuttle that goes a couple of times a week, or we can provide transportation to you if you uh, if you're, you you want to get in at a specific time, get out at a specific time. But otherwise, once you get to that primary road, that primary highway page, you're able to jump on a bus and head to Managua. I like that you're an adventurous lady. All right, we have Joshua here who's from Texas. Joshua, yes, I'm glad to hear you're sold. Come on down, let us know what uh, what home model is best for you. All right, we have someone else who's asking what currency is used. Uh, the currency in, in, in Nicaragua is called the Cordoba. And if you give me one second here, I can tell you what the current exchange rate is to the US dollar. So it looks like one US dollar is equivalent to about 35 Nicaraguan Cordoba. Uh, you are able to get U.S. dollars really quite easily, though. If you go to the ATM, they do accept U.S. dollars, too. The conversion may not be exactly what you see on you know, Google when you're doing that conversion rate, but you are able to uh, to use U.S. dollars. Uh, the next question here I'm seeing is about the volcano. How likely is it to erupt? Uh, there are a lot of volcanoes within uh, Nicaragua. Um, I think one of the coolest one is Messiah, and that is active, and that you're actually able to see the lava. But there are a handful of volcanoes that are extinct and then others that are still active. So not sure if there's a specific one that you have in mind, uh, but if you do want to see lava, if that's been a bucket list thing, go to the one in Messiah. It's about, about 30 minutes from, uh, from Managua, and you can see that there, which is which is pretty quite cool. All right, Kim is saying, how are the roads from the airport to the resort? Um, that's a, a really great question. You know, Kim, it's funny because a lot of times people don't even think to ask those sort of questions because if you're living in a developed world, like access is great, you know, but when you're coming down to a developing country, uh, it really is up to the developer to put the infrastructure in to get to the property. So when we first put, well, to answer your question first, the roads are perfect. They're perfectly paved. It's easy to get there, 45 minutes, super easy. Uh, when we first bought the property, we ended up, you know, really carving this road to get out during uh, rainy season. It was almost impossible to get to the property, but now uh, over over time, we've we've paved those 11 kilometers, and it's it's a very smooth ride. Um, the cost of a taxi from the airport to the resort, you know, I don't know that off the top of my head, but just reach out to us, Kim, and we can get that for you. We can check in with our front desk as well. They do uh, back and forth transfers to and from the city or to and from the airport. So whatever it is uh, that or wherever it is that you would like to go. 
Um, Bruce is saying, does the river drain into the ocean? Yes, it does, Bruce. And we can send you that video that we just that we just showed. I think there's a little clip in there that shows it going out to the ocean. Uh, but otherwise, the answer is yes. All right, I see someone here is asking about the square footage of the home. So as you can see, I'm gonna just go a couple of a couple of slides back. Oops, I may need you, I'm gonna put that back on the screen there if you, you can. Um, but the square footage, actually, I'm gonna show my screen guys here. Just bear with me one second and I'll, I'll share my screen and you'll be able to work with me here as we're going back to the models. Okay, so we have four models that Natalie uh, reviewed a little bit earlier. Are you, I don't know if you're able to see. Oh, it looks like, sorry about that. It just shut down here. All right, we're gonna try that one more time. But there are four models that uh, Natalie spoke about earlier. They do range in size, just depending on how much square footage you want. And remember that, you know, we really do tend to live in the tropics. When you look at the square footage here, it is just of the interior space. So we don't include the, the decks or the patios or anything along those, those lines or these lines. But you can see the Laura is about 350 square feet. Halcone's a little bit smaller at about 333 square feet. Here's where you have the biggest, uh, the difference, the Perico, which is really an efficient home. It has that, that loft. Um, Natalie, I like how you would describe that. It's like the studio with that, the half loft there where you're able to accommodate a third person on the, the left-hand side. But this one's about, 258 square feet and the macaws about two, 450. This is the two bed, two bath model. And these homes here, um, again, it just depends on, you know, what you're looking for and the floor plans do vary. Some people are attracted to some homes, others to the other home. So just depends on, on what you're looking for. But again, that does not include the outdoor space that comes with the home as well. Yes, there is internet there in Nicaragua. So because these homes are off grid, the internet will come from a radio tower. It's a very similar, I mean, the same model that we've used with our Milagro Verde at home community. And it's worked really, really quite well over the years. So yes, definitely is going to be internet. Okay, Rick, great question here. Where is the water for the individual units coming? Uh, it's actually, we have a, um, a water plant on site uh, on Grand, at Grand Pacifica. And so the water will come from that, that plant there on site. So it is a, you are able to drink it from the faucet. It is clean, it is purified, it is potable. So do know that you are going to have clean water. So that is the one aspect of Ava that is connected in a sense where you will be getting it from uh, Grand Pacifica. Uh, Paige is saying, are there biking trails to shopping? Uh, not necessarily biking trails, but you can, you can certainly bike uh, should you choose that that road is is quite smooth so you're able to do that teresa oh teresa saying if you're not using it is there a rental management um operation so yes the answer is yes and i want you to uh, to hear me on this because we have two different rental management options for you so we have what we call the rental and or the renter investment program and if you're coming in and you're looking at it primarily from the investor perspective then you have up to six weeks of complimentary personal usage per year and the other part of the year it'll be rented i will put into the rental management program if you're looking at this from more of the, the lifestyle perspective so you want to come and go as you please maybe you want to be here for three months at a time you are able to do that and be part of the the lifestyle rental program but do note that we can't you know give any sort of guarantees or even really an accurate performa as to how often your home would be rented. The ones that are in the investor rental program would really have priority over the ones that are in the lifestyle one because you know, as a rental management company, we need to know what our inventory is. And so it just makes it a little bit difficult to do that if somebody is coming and going as they please. But if you're looking at this from an investment perspective, then go into the investor rental program, six weeks of personal usage per year, which is a good bit of time, but anything above and beyond that, then you only pay 30% of the rack rate too. So pretty affordable there, or you can be in that lifestyle rental program, come and go as you please, but it is an in-house turnkey, um, turnkey solution for you. Someone is asking if the cost of the solar power system is built into the prices, and the answer for that is yes. Uh, built into the prices are the appliances as well. And then what's not included is the furniture package. So 
Um, if you want, we have the, these prices, please note that these prices don't include the closing costs, which is 3% of the purchase price or the furniture package. Furniture package is optional, uh, but if you're going into the rental management program that is required, but if you're planning to live in it, then you don't necessarily need to have the rental uh, or you don't necessarily need to have the furniture, but reach out to us and we would uh, love to get you those details. This, I know there's a lot of information and we really just wanted to give you the high overview, high level overview here, but for your specific questions, reach out to us and our team. Uh, our team will certainly be in touch. Uh, Megan here is asking about how e easy is it to find renters for these types of homes? Um, well, for us from the, the Grand Pacifica perspective, uh, we, we Think it's going to be quite easy because we do have that database already. We are already serving renters in the marketplace, the servers, the, the, the surfers, the wellness retreat groups, uh, and a lot of others. But if I would not recommend you know doing an Airbnb, I've seen that fail too many times for people who aren't living there on site. You can certainly provide renters to us should you choose, and you can earn a referral fee for that. But um, I would definitely recommend going through the rental management program. That's already established. Uh, Gabrielle, sorry, she says the ROA slide is very small, can't read the figures. Well, reach out to us. I will get you the ROI slide depending on which model you're looking at. And uh, from there, we'll be able to zoom in and, and go into the figures a little bit more. Um, I'm going to try to understand this question. It says, what is year one? How many years after contract signing? I'm not really sure what that means, but from the construction period, it takes like the eight to nine, eight to nine, ten months to get the home built. After that, when it's when it's built, it's able to go into the the rental program. Should you want it to go into the rental program? And just as a reminder, we do not start the home until um, until you agree to the ownership there. All right, I know. So I said I'm, I, there's a lot of information there processing. I'm glad you're going to get the uh, the replay. We'll certainly get that over to you. Uh, Narut, awesome. Narut looks like she's in for the macaw and look for some financing. All right, I'm seeing a lot of questions here. I think we have about 80 questions, 80 more questions here, and it's a little bit after uh, the hour. Right? Um, but I'm going to go through a couple more, and then if you don't hear from us yet, please reach out to us directly with your question. We'll get that question answered for you as soon as possible, and so we can uh, get you get you the details. Now, I do want to mention in phase one, which is 50 homes, those homes at this point have all sold out. So for this webinar specifically, we've released 10 more homes in phase two. Uh, the other homes within the phase two, there are 40 homes that are currently under reservation, but uh, we have released 10 for this webinar specifically. So um, reach out to us, our team will get you that site map so you can see what availability looks like. And then of course you can put any model there on any of the homes. All right, cost of maintenance. So HOA, uh, it's a monthly HOA of about $148 a month and it's really quite comprehensive. It includes the security, the upkeep of the common areas. You can see there's some awesome landscaping going in. So keeping up the the landscaping. There's a turtle sanctuary that's there as well. So it'll cover that upkeep, the upkeep of the orchard and the community garden area. Uh, there's just a lot, a lot more reach out to us specifically for that. But, you know, it is important to make sure we're maintaining this community. So it is looking good. And, uh, and it's about $148 US a month for any of the homes. And then the building has begun. Joshua just asked, building has begun. And uh, it takes about eight to nine months for the homes to be built. And so we are asking that if you do want to move forward, we will be sending you the paperwork over the next week and a half, two weeks. And then from there, we can get started on your home. All right, Narut, awesome. All right, I see, yes, Joshua constructed one purchase. Um, the completion of the community. So I'm going to just answer that last question there. So when to expect completion of the community? So for this first phase, I say for the first 50 homes, those are the ones that are, um, are under construction right now. Be about early next year when that property is up and operating and ready to accept rentals. And then phase two, we're able to start that, I mean, tomorrow, really, uh, with those first 10 homes when we find those happy 10 homeowners. So again, about eight, nine, 10 months for the completion of the communities there. All right, there's a lot, like I said, there are a lot more questions here. Yes, there is AC, split AC systems. Yes, they are titled. Um, how are they related to Teak? They're both within Grand Pacifica property. There's, yeah, there's a lot, a lot going on here, but we are going to send you the recording here. Reach out to our team as you have any questions. Natalie and Ivan, 
thank you so much for joining us for this. We really do appreciate your time and your energy. I know this is a project that you're both very passionate about and, uh, and, and we're excited to welcome owners to the community in the very near future here. So any last words, Ivan or Natalie? Oh, thanks, Rachel. I just want to thank everyone and let us know ASAP if you want to reserve because these homes are going very, very quickly. But um, yeah, just get in touch and thank you guys so much for joining us. I'll echo that as well. Thanks everybody for joining us. We really appreciate your time and excited to welcome you guys to the AVA community. Uh, we hope to see you down in Nicaragua if you're interested to head down. Uh, Rachel did mention that we have some discovery tour dates coming up. So please reach out if you're interested. Uh, and like Natalie said, these homes are going hot off the market. So if you're interested, do reach out and we will be in touch very soon. Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody. Have a really great evening, afternoon, morning, depending where in the world you're calling in from. And we look forward to seeing you here in Latin America very, very soon. Bye, everyone.